in this example, I own these cameras and I've given myself permission to attack them as a demonstration of what's possible. Change the passwords of your IP cameras. Don't use defaults. Make sure that you implement stuff like 2FA or two-factor authentication or don't allow access to your cameras from the internet. Host them locally. Don't allow people to use Shodan and other tools to discover IP cameras and then attack them. Lock them down. Okay, so again, in this example, I've got two IP cameras connected to a little network here. I've got Carly on this laptop. And what I can do is discover the cameras and then attack them using Carly Linux. I'll type the command IP address to show me my local IP address. As you can see here, I've got an IP address 192.168.1.3. So what I'll do now is use Nmap to scan the local subnet. So I'm scanning for devices in the 192.168.1.0 subnet. We've discovered two HIC vision cameras, IP address 192.168.1.2 and IP address 192.168.1.4. We've also discovered the TP-Link device, which is actually this laptop. But notice here, HIC vision. These are not branded as HIC vision cameras. This is branded as Anka or Ank, however you want to pronounce it. Let me know in the comments the correct pronunciation of this. I often get comments about the way that I pronounce things, American English versus British English versus South African English. But again, these are two IP cameras and we've discovered them. So what we can then do is use Nmap to get details of one of the cameras. So let's use Nmap to find out which ports are open on 192.168.1.4. Okay, so this tells us that it's most likely an IP camera. Notice we see port 554 RTSP we see an alternate HTTP port. A lot of developers seem to believe that if they move the default port of a service like HTTP to some other random port, it won't be discovered. But notice it was very, very simple to discover the ports on this camera. The important one here is RTSP. So what I'm gonna do actually is jump to Windows on this laptop and I'm going to open up a VLC. VLC is a media player. You can download it and install it for free. What I'm gonna do here is open a network stream. And in this example, I'll open up a network stream by typing RTSP colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.4. So the IP address of the camera and the port number being 554. Again, in Kali, that's what we see here. IP address of camera, port number that we want to open up is port 554. Okay, so I'll click play and we asked for a password. Now this is where tools, which I'll demonstrate and OTW also demonstrates, can be used to attack an IP camera. You can use a brute force attack or you can use a password list as an example to try and attack the camera. I'll simply enter a default username of admin and no password here and notice I get access to the camera. So I'll turn the volume down on the laptop so we don't hear my voice twice. But notice as simple as that, we've got the camera. If I put my hand in front of the device, notice we can see what's happening. Now, a lot of people may say, okay, David, but how do I know what the password is? I mean, same thing can be done here with the other camera. So if I connect to dot two rather than dot four and put in the username and password, notice I can see the output of this camera. And there you go, my hand in front of the camera. So again, how do you know what the password is? And that's where tools like Camera Radar can help hackers attack cameras. So notice, again, this port is open. We've got some other ports here. But what I'm going to do is run Docker and run this Camera Radar application and try and attack that camera, 192.168.1.4. What Camera Radar allows us to do is use a list of usernames and passwords to try and attack the camera. Now, while that's going, I'll move to the camera radar directory just to show you the dictionaries that are used. So I've got this dictionaries folder. I'll go into that folder and notice here we've got a credentials file. So I'll say more credentials.json and notice it will try various usernames and various passwords to try and attack the camera. So as an example, it'll try admin one and then it will try various passwords like pass or password or password123 or qwerty or root or other passwords to try and guess what the password is. Now, sometimes it won't work. In this example, it's actually using a Docker container with default passwords. And in my example, I found that it doesn't work with these cameras. So what I had to do is add additional usernames and passwords to the dictionary file to be able to attack it. So as you can see here, 
it's now found one stream and it's going to attack the credentials of that stream. Okay, so here are the results. It tells us what camera has been discovered. It tells us the IP address of the camera, it tells us the port, but notice the username and password were not found in this example. So if I scroll up, you can see it's trying all kinds of usernames and passwords. So like supervisor and the password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, here with 10 at the end. Here it's trying a password of four, three, two, one. Different passwords are attempted. Here we've got supervisor with a password admin, etc. So it's trying different usernames and passwords based on a dictionary, but it didn't find the password in this example. So what we can do is run the application, but get it to use a dictionary file that we've created. So I'm pointing it to my home Kali dictionary directory and telling it to use that dictionary when attacking the camera. So I'll run this again. And while it's running, so again on my Kali machine, in my home directory, I have created a dictionary folder or directory. And inside there, I've created this file called parse.json. So if I look at that file, you can see that I have added a blank password and admin as one of the usernames. So you can add usernames and passwords to the dictionary file and then leverage that using camera radar to attack the camera. So in other words, to work out what the password is. So there you go. It found the username, which is admin. It found the password, which is blank, no password found the IP address, tells us what camera it is. So basically, it's been able to work out the username and password for this camera. So again, if I know that information, I can open up the network stream to the camera, click play, and then put in the username and password that we discovered. And there you go, I can see the output of this camera.